Hi and welcome to Scooter Rack. If you've uh, bought a Scooter Rack, this video is going to help you with the installation of it. Uh, if you're thinking about buying a Scooter Rack or a wheelchair rack, new addition to the family, smaller, great for the power wheelchairs, then this is going to help. This is how your Scooter Rack should arrive. Look down, camera check. Okay, all these boxes in here. In here we've got the cable ties, or the straps, there's two of those, plus there's cable ties which are going to hold the light kit on. Okay? Don't lose them. This is the reversing sensor. Comes with the manual, it has a key code number on it. Don't lose that. This is the reversing sensor unit. Don't drop that. I'll show you how to fit that later. In here is the light kit. Now you can't use a scooter rack unless you have a light kit attached. Well, let me rephrase that. You can use a scooter rack without a light kit, but if the cops catch you, you'll cop a fine. Your choice. We give you the light kit, you decide whether you want to use it. If you don't fit the light kit, you can't use the reversing sensor. Mm. Bugger. In this big brown box, We've got all the bits and pieces, all of the hardware that we're going to use to fit onto the scooter rack. We've got the anti-tip wheel. We've got the brackets, the hitch assembly, the padlock, the anti-wobble bracket, the main hitch assembly, that locks the ramp into place, the gas strut. That's empty. Now all this stuff is going to take you about an hour to fit. We're going to make these videos in short little segments, hopefully about 10 minutes each. So at uh, 1.45, camera check, we go to a pause, okay? This is yes. Mm. Okay, we're going to put the uh, hitch assembly on, put all the bits and pieces on as we go. The instruction guide that I sent you, that will have all the information on it, but this should clear it up a bit for you. This pad is going to be facing downwards, you'll notice there's a hole here. You get one of those pins which is in the bag, line it up, put that through, and put the pin through. There's no way that can come out, okay? So what we do now is we put these bolts in and it stops it from wobbling. Otherwise you'll hear that on the back of the car. So just empty out the bags and you'll find bits and pieces. And these are the bolts. There's only four and they're all the same size. Now use Loctite if you can because that stops it from vibrating loose. You can use Celastic if you want to. That'll do just as good a job. So we'll come back in a second after I've put these in. That means turn it off. Welcome back. As you can see, we've got the four bolts in. Doesn't wobble now. Get this big thing. Tip out this bag. And you'll find one of these bolts and a lock nut. It goes up here. And we're going to put the, the bolt through this hole. Now there's no need to put Loctite on this one because it's a lock nut. Back in a sec. Okay, now do this bolt up reasonably tight. Um, if you do it up too tight, you won't be able to move this up and down. But if you do it up um, nice and tight, it won't wobble. I hate things that are loose and wobble. Because when they're on the back of the car, it sounds like the thing's falling off the back. Don't 
that's okay. Because you've got to remember, you're going you're gonna to have the weight of the rack going up and down, okay? Alright. So now we've got the hitch assembly on. Um, this little nut here, we're going to use that later to adjust the level of it. So not all that important right now. Uh, this is the little nipple. Am I allowed to say that? Mm. It's the little thing that sticks out at the end and it's going to help us locate the, uh, the slot on the back of the car later. It makes it really easy to install. Okay, back in a sec. Okay, now we're going to put the, uh, the gas strut on. And that's got uh, this bracket, a couple of small bolts and washers. Don't forget to use Loctite. That's this stuff. You can use Celastic as well. Uh, Celastic just takes a bit longer to dry and it'll stop. The main thing is that it stops the screws from vibrating loose, which they could do. Um, it's just a better way of doing it. You can get this stuff from Bunnings. It's not all that expensive. It's going to screw into these two holes here. Okay? There's a great little tool. Now in the box, so uh, this is the gas strut, so unpack it. Back in a sec. Okay, we're going to put this uh, gas strut on now. This is under high pressure. And it says that you can lift the rack up and down with very effortlessly. So this bit is going to just screw into here. And you'll need the right size socket for that. You can't use the power one, unfortunately. You'll notice too that uh, when, while you're down here, all the uh, welds, the mesh is welded on every second spot, which means that the new scooter racks, this is the new model rack, it's twice as strong as the old one. Alright, now what we've got to do is we've got to um, bend this forward and get it to about the height where this will be able to easily screw in. I've got the Loctite on the last one. I'll put that on later. And just screw that in. Okay, now you won't be able to pull that back by hand. Well, maybe you can. I'm not real strong, but if you can do it, 
I can't do it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is, um, as you can see, that's all, all on. The hitch assembly's on, the gas shock is on, um, it's ready for action. Uh, this is the, the bolt goes into there and that holds the reversing sensor into place. We're going to do that later. Uh, next is the installation of the wheel away roller. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, we're going to put the wheel away roller on now. And that goes on here. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Straightforward installation. There's a whole bag of um, bolts, nuts, washers, uh, all one size. Oh, camera check. Before I forget, come over here. If you have a problem putting, um, uh, lining this pin up, because this is the locking pin, okay? So this is the pin that holds the, the rack in the up or down position after you've moved it. It's pretty important that it slides in and out nice and easily, and that, that locks it in place, okay? Now, if we've put this on here like I did on previously, you might find that this is at a bit of an angle, and you can't put this pin through the hole. So you should put the pin through uh, the hole first, and then what you do is, this bracket down here has slots in it, and it, uh, you can move it up and down. So what you do is, you put the top bit in first, do it up, then screw, uh, this bracket's obviously in place already, then put this uh, in the hole and do that up nice and tight, and then do up these two small ones, okay? And then you'll find that it'll all line up, goes in and out nice and easily. Okay, so if you have an alignment issue and you can't get that in the hole there, uh, it's because this bar is out of whack and all that is in uh, alignment now, okay? Alright, get back to your spot please, camera check. We'll do the uh, wheel away roller next. Okay, we're going to put the uh, wheel on now, camera check. This one's pretty easy. You won't need that. That's the Loctite because you've got lock nuts on here, okay? And you've got washers. So we just put uh, the one in. Nice and easy. Do that there. This is a great gadget, by the way. Okay, and do the other four. I'll be right back. All right, camera check, we've got the wheel on. As you can see, it's uh, pretty straight. Any of you uh, catch my blooper? I said I've got to do four more screws. Actually, I only had three more screws to do. All right, so that's, uh, that's the wheel. And that says that you can roll this baby along without having to carry it. All right, we're gonna put the light kit on next. So uh, we'll be back in a second. I'll show you how to do that. All right, camera check, we're gonna put the light kit on now. The light kit is in this brown box. As you can see, the, um, I've flipped the scooter rack over, and it's now sitting on the shaft. And I've opened the door up, and that just gives a good balance. Um, the door will swing open, so just be careful. Okay, you don't want to do any damage to anything. So just set it up like that. Um, there is a left and a right to this uh, to the kit, and uh, I've put a cable tie on here, so you're just going to have to cut that off. Okay. Now I know it looks really complicated, but it's not. The hard part is building these light kits. You've got the easy part, you just have to connect them. And get the sticky tape off. richest guy in the world must be the bloke who invented sticky tape. I think we must have used two and a half rolls on this. Now don't worry, I won't be sending that one out, it's scratched. I'll keep that one for myself.
Oh yeah, this is fun. Okay, that's that one. A pair of scissors would probably do the job better. Please don't use a knife, okay? Because if you use a knife, you're going to cut something and you're going to do damage. Alrighty. Now, down here, somewhere in amongst this rubbish, there's going to be your screws. Oh, in with the padlock. Okay, so that's your hitch pin padlock. I'll show you where that goes later. These four screws, they're to hold the light kit to the scooter rack. Okay? So the first one we'll put on is the one on the left hand side. That's got the number plate on it. So camera chick, get down here. Alright, so what you do is, they only go on one way, okay folks? And what you've got to do is, you've got to put the screw from the inside. Here's the washer. There's only two screws for each light kit. Trust me, they won't go anywhere once these screws are in place. Okay, so you do that, and then you do the same for the one on the other side. Untangle it first, because uh, you do have to use the cable ties that we give you to hold the scooter rack, uh, to hold the light kits to the scooter rack. You're laughing at me, aren't you, camera chick? Me man. Here we go. Alright, now we're off onto this side. Okay, and the holes line up. You can't put them any other way. Now remember, if you don't use the light kit and you get pulled over by the cops, I told you so. So don't blame me. Alrighty, we're going to come back in a few secs. I'm going to do all these up and then I'm going to show you how to do the cable ties, okay? Okay, this is uh, the light kit now. It's fitted and as you can see it's hinged so it stops where you put it, okay? So when the scooter rack is uh, down and loaded, that will be up like that. When the scooter rack is in the vertical position and you're traveling along, then the light kit will be like this. Don't forget your number plate. You get these from the RTA, Queensland Transport, Vic Roads. Um, in New South Wales we call it a bike rack. I don't know what they call it in other states. Uh, accessory plate or some other dumb name. But uh, they're about 35 bucks uh, and you do need one. The number plate light is there. Um, so you need to make sure that um, you get that, okay? Alright, so that's uh, that particular light. Here's the, uh, the right hand side, as you can see blinkers uh, on the outside, and same thing, it locks into place. Now if you come back here, what I'm going to do is, you see the cables are all loose, yeah? So what we have to do is, we have to cable tie the cables right along the frame, alright, so you leave a nice little loop like that, alright, one cable is going to go down, and um, that's where the that's where the plug is, right? And that also is where the reversing sensor cable is, okay? And the other cable is just going to go over the top, and we're just going to cable tie it right along the edge, nice and neat. Must be neat. I like neat, okay? And um, we're going to make sure that's all tucked in, nice and neat. So uh, the cable ties uh, are in the bag. You get about 25 of them, and you shouldn't need any more than that. Standard cable ties, get them from Bunnings if you run short, and that's a couple of straps to hold the scooter or the wheelchair down. Alright, well I'll uh, get this started and I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, well this is the, uh, the light kit now, pretty much fully installed. 
you can see here we've got the cable ties and we just cut them off make sure they're nice and tight okay and uh, every um, every fourth or fifth slot we just put a nice little cable tie and it's all nice and neat then we come down here we go across uh, we've got to come down here because there's the reversing sensor plugs in at the top here and I'll show you that in a moment so back up nicely spaced nice and tight over to the next light and uh, all ready to rock and roll now down here this is the extension for the reversing uh, sensor okay now um, if you follow that down don't forget to cable tie it in behind here hold it in nice and tight um, it's out of the way of the strut so nothing's going to happen there um, and that's that should give you plenty of length to plug it into your tow bar socket okay so make sure it's all nice and tight now I'm just going to grab the uh, keep filming video check all right this is the reversing sensor okay now this white bit here um, just gives it a bit more support and uh, strength and it it makes it a pretty tight fit. Now, don't use a hammer when you're pushing this in, okay? That's pretty much all you need to do. And then use the screw that's provided. Put that in. Uh, and don't forget, use Loctite on that because that's, um, you know, that's, there's nothing there to stop it from wiggling out, okay? And do it up by hand if you like, or um, if, you, if you must use um, a, a shifter. Don't over tighten it because you, it's plastic, you crack the plastic, but just give it enough strength so that it can't come back out. And then you plug that into there. And now your reversing sensor is pretty much ready to go now. You could probably cable tie that and that way it keeps it out of the way, okay? So um, I'll be doing that in a second, I'll just put it, be putting another cable tie. And it just makes it nice and neat. So that um, is pretty much for the accessories. The next step is we're going to take it outside and we're going to stick um, the ramp bits um, on so as the ramp locks into place. And we're going to make some adjustments to the scooter rack so that um, it loads properly up and down. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much what we're going to do. And we'll see you outside. Camera check, you're watching this. This is what we do to put it on the back of a car. The old uh, pin that you get with the uh, when you put the tow bar on the car okay we give you a new one and it's got a uh, hitch pin padlock I'll be back in a sec show you what it looks like all right you can see that the um, the rack is crooked okay um, that's because the anti-wobble screw hasn't been done up the safety pin is in it and the rack can't come out but if you don't have the anti-wobble screw or the bracket fitted, this will just bounce around. Won't do anything other than make a lot of noise. Okay? So camera girl, get down here. Come on girl, time is money. Down here. Can you see that? That's the anti-wobble screw. So when you do that screw up, the rack levels out and it won't wobble at all. Okay, now alternately, if you don't have that, look, see if you can get your uh, tow bar guy to put that in, okay? It's pretty important. It costs you about 50 bucks to get one welded on. Or, if you won't do it, we've got the anti-wobble bracket. Now, what happens is, and this is in the kit, okay? It comes with it. And it slides in. You slide this through the hole, and then it slides in over this, 
and then you do the bolts up. And it basically does the same job as that bolt there. Okay? But this is a bit of a pain in the neck. I've got to tell you, getting down under here and doing those three bolts up. But if you've got no choice, then you need it. Okay? Alright, so what I'm going to do is, camera girl, you want to get back a bit and I'll just do that up and you can watch it straighten out, okay? comes as part of the kit, more sticky tape, and you get two keys. Here's your keys, separate them so you don't lose them, okay? Waterproof cover. And this is the hitch pin. it on, put the waterproof cover back on, put the keys in the pocket. The plug, plug over here. Oh, camera check, come back here. Listen folks, you've now got a reversing sensor. It comes down through wiring and it comes to the plug, okay? It's pretty important that your tow bar guy wires up pin 3 to the reversing light on the car. Okay, he has to connect up pin 3. Look, I call it pin 3 because it's third from the end. Um, it's actually not pin 3, but it's the one that needs to be connected to the reversing light. If you don't, connect the reversing light to the plug on the car or to the socket on the car your reversing sensor won't work okay standard plug okay now I'm just going to do this nut up As you can see, the rack is leveled out. Okay, and there's not a lot of movement now. That won't move when you're traveling along the road. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is set the ramp up. To do that, you need to pull out the locking pin. That pin there holds the rack in the vertical position. That's a safety pin, so it can't move, okay? You need to pull the pin out and then pull this out that way. Hey camera chick, you want to show everyone how easy it is to go up and down? I'll swap with you. Here we go. Alright, off you go. That's it, let it go through the concrete. It won't bounce much. Oh yeah, okay. Now the idea is to actually hold on to the rack while you're doing it. So now this is how we do it properly. That's it. Hang on, I got my fingers stuck Hang on, stop it doing Okay, come on, camera chick. Can you do this or not? Here we go. Alrighty. 
That's it. That's how it's done, folks. Here we go. Here we go. Take the camera. I should take my glasses off. Anyway. Uh, they can hear you. Sorry. Say hello. Hello. All right. <laughs> okay, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to put the, uh, the ramp bracket on. Now I only put this on here so that I could transport it without it falling on me, okay? So remember, that's the anti-wobble bracket. If you want to use it, you can. If you want to use it with the anti-wobble screw on your hitch, you can. If you don't want to, okay. Uh, now that the ramp is down, don't forget to put that back in. Okay, and this is going to take a little bit of adjusting because if you, um, actually camera check, can you come over here for a second please? And get a side on shot of this. You can see that it's printing out, you, you need to get, you need to go back, keep going, keep going. Okay, can you see how the rack is pretty level? Okay. So we need, okay, camera chick, can you see that it, the rack's nice and level, okay? So I can get on here now, and it should stay pretty level, all right? Bounces up and down with the suspension of the car. That's the whole idea of it, all right? The problem is, it's a little bit too flat, and we can't get this pin back in, okay? So we've got to lift the, we've got to lift it a little bit so that we can get the pin back in. Now that's not easy, sometimes it does take two people. So camera chick, uh, you want to turn that off for a second, come over here. Alright camera chick, as you can see the ramp's on a bit of a, an upward incline now, okay? That is the perfect angle. And what we had to do was put the pin in, okay, so that's the pin, so you had to lift it up and down, lubricate it a little bit, and that's the locking pin, okay? That's a safety pin. And then once you've got that in place so that pin goes in and out, then you do up this screw under here. And then do up that locking nut. Okay? So I'm just going to grab the shifter. Okay, and just do that nut up a bit. Alright. So that keeps that height nice and constant. And what happens is when you load a scooter onto it, then it levels down a bit. So at the moment it's up, it'll level down. And that is the perfect setup for the scooter rack. It'll stay there all day. I've traveled from Newcastle to Canberra on it twice. It hasn't missed a beat. I've got some folks that have traveled from Queensland to Victoria. It hasn't missed a beat. All right, now what I want to do is put this bracket on. So uh, this bracket here is uh, for the ramp. It can be a little bit tricky, okay? And uh, they're the pull pins that lock the ramp into place in the vertical position. It can be a little bit tricky to put these two screws in, so watch carefully. Because I'm, I'm going to put the uh, pull pin in, into here, otherwise the ramp just bounces up and down. Okay, so put this one first. Use a bit of Loctite, please. You know, car vibration, um, you just never know what's going to happen. As you can see, the, uh, the pin is overlapping the edge quite nicely. Just do it up so that it's nice and tight, okay? So now the rack can't come out until you pull that out and then the ramp lifts up, okay? So I'm going to do that now and put the bracket on to the end of the 
scooter rack. So this is the bracket that I was talking about, and it's going to go onto here. Okay. It's got lock nuts, so you don't need to use Loctite. But you will need to chase the nuts because they roll really fast. Okay, great tool. has a bit of wobble in it, okay? Now these haven't been done up yet either. Alright, just keep that in mind. So what I'm going to do now is lift the ramp up and lock it into place. Okay, so this is the fiddly bit. Now you've got to get one pin that sits on the back of the ramp, and the other pin's got to go through the, uh, the hole and that locks it into place. So this is where you've got to maneuver it in and out, up and down, until you get it in. There you go, you saw it click in there, okay? So once you've got that there, do those two up down the bottom again. That means this bracket is now in place. Hopefully it hasn't moved too much. And now, that should auto lock, if I've done it right. It takes a bit of wiggling, as you can see. So you can just loosen those two screws up here. Until it auto, auto loads. So you want it to go in a bit smoother than that, okay? Um, and this is probably in a bit tight as well. Okay, so um, it's probably in a bit tight. So just keep manoeuvring it until it pops into the hole like it has just then, okay? Don't forget to put Loctite on those and um, make sure they're done up nice and tight so it doesn't move. But if you find the ramp over time, uh, it's harder to get this in the hole. Just loosen them up, loosen them up and find the right position for it. Because it is a little bit tricky this um, and sometimes it might take a bit of wiggling like that to get it in. But as you can see, it's very sturdy. Okay, I'm going to go and get a scooter and show you how to load it. rack which is physically shorter it's narrower and it's lighter everything else is the same the lights the reversing sensor all the other bits and pieces are exactly the same but it's not so So 
Oh, one other thing. As a free bonus, $179 waterproof scooter cover will come with every scooter rack as a bonus and as a thank you for buying the product. So, uh, oh, one other thing. I've heard some people say, yeah, Frank, it's great on a truck, but how about on a car? I'll be back in two seconds. screws. Oh, no. Okay, as you can see, it uh, fits on the back of a Commodore. The car's 20 years old. Took a bit of fiddling getting it into the hole, you know, because it's right underneath. And that's where that extra little pin comes in handy. See the, uh, the scooter loaded on, the car's nice and level. Okay? So, this is a 20 year old car. Actually, I think it's 20 years old today. Happy birthday. So, if you've got the scooter rack on a car with the scooter loaded and it's like right down, you probably need to get harder shocks. That generally is, is what's causing it. The shocks do soften over time. This just goes to show this is 20 years old and still holding strong. Okay? I think probably if I stood on here the car would go down a bit more. This weighs 100 kilos. I'm a trim 79. You can see how it goes down. Okay? So if, if you're finding that maybe even air shocks would be a good alternative to pump it back up. No different to having a, uh, a trailer on the end, okay? Alright, camera check. Thanks for uh, looking at the scooter rack. Hope to uh, hear from you soon.